Over the past year or so, webcams have been getting absolutely scalped, to the point where even things that are absolutely ancient in the world of tech, like the Logitech C920, have had their prices shoot through the roof. But luckily, every single one of us already has a camera in our pockets, and in many cases, this camera actually looks better than what we have as a webcam. So this right here is Droidcam, which is basically going to let us go and turn our Android phone into a webcam. Now, it does also work on iOS. I haven't actually tested the iOS version out though, so I can't tell you how well it's actually going to work. Now, to get this working, we actually need to install two different things. The first thing we need is a client on our computer. Now, in my case, I'm on Arch Linux, so I can install it from the AUR, but if you're not on Arch, there are installed instructions on the website. There are some binaries as well that you can get access to, but if you need to, you can just go and compile it from source. Now, the other thing that you need to do is actually go and install an app on your phone. So in my case, I'm on Android, but as I mentioned, there is also an iOS version as well. There is one slight problem with the app though, so there are some really, really useful features that are locked behind the paywall. I can understand why the dev wanted to do this, because otherwise no one would ever bother donating to it. So if you want to have HD video, you need to go and pay for the app. Now, this isn't really that bad, because the app is only $5, and you will never find a webcam that looks as good as your phone for $5, so I think it's a perfectly fine purchase. But if you don't pay for the app, you still get 480p video, so it works perfectly fine for most situations. Now, there are some other things in here that it does say are locked behind the paywall, but this seems to only be the case on Windows. I know this line does say specifically Windows, but these ones, so rotating the camera, flipping the video, things like that, are supposed to be paid only, but they don't seem to be at least using the Linux client. Once you've got both of those installed, there are two main ways to connect to the phone. The first one is through Wi-Fi, and the second one is through USB. Now, in most housing setups, the Wi-Fi connection is going to be fine. But if you are noticing you are having any delays, then you probably will want to switch over to USB. The USB version is a bit harder to set up, though, so we'll start with Wi-Fi. So let me just log into that. Okay, so what you need to basically do is take this IP address right here. So in my case, it's going to be 192.168.0.7. Pop that in over here, so 192.168.0.7, and make sure your port number is exactly the same. So in this case, 4747, 4747. That is the default port. As long as you don't change it, it is going to be on that port. Now, also make sure you have enable video ticked as well. If you don't, then you won't get any video. And then all you need to do is go and press connect. Now, sometimes the connection is going to break a bit. So if you go and close the app while it's still connected, you might have some issues in that respect. So make sure you go and stop the video and then you quit the app. If you do happen to quit out of the app while it is still connected, basically just reopen it, close the video, and then close it again, and it should be fine to reconnect. If you do want to have access to your phone's audio as well, you can go and tick this second box here and it will pass it through as an Ulcer device. Now, I don't actually have Ulcer devices working properly in OBS, so you won't be able to hear it right now. But if I did go and bring this up and say Audacity, it would actually be able to record with that. So to actually flip the camera, we have to actually go and end the connection first. So this can be done from the client side or from the phone side. So if we want to do it from the phone, all we need to do is go click these dots up here, click stop, and then it'll show us a prompt to close it. So let's go press OK. Now, sometimes it won't mirror that change over on the client side as well. So it will still say it's connected even though it's not actually connected. All you do is just go click stop and it'll then go and fix that. Now, if you want to go and actually flip the camera, what we do is click this button right here. And then we can go and select the camera we want to use. So let's use the back camera this time and then reconnect again. So like you'd expect from pretty much any camera, if you go and pinch outwards, it will zoom in. Pinch inwards, it will zoom out. And let's say that we want to, I don't know, focus on this right here. So if we go and tap on it, it should go and update the focus. Let's, there we go. My hand's there. It shouldn't be in focus. Tap on that. It should try to focus it. My, my phone's not great though. So... Don't expect it to do a great job in this case. But there's also some slight controls we can do from the client side as well. Now, if we go click these dots down here, these are supposed to be Droid Cam X commands, but they seem to be working just fine without it. So we can do things like enabling the autofocus. Let's see, something that's out of focus. The monitor doesn't seem to be in focus. If we go and click this, it should try to focus on it. Let's try my hand. I'm going to focus on that. Nope, that's doing it. Absolutely fantastic job. Good job, phone. Anyway, we can also go and do things like modifying the flash. So if we go and press Control L or press this button right here, as we will see, the flash is now on. Basically, it just turns it on constantly like you would with, say, like a Torch app. 
we can also go and actually modify the zoom as well. So we go and press the plus key. As we can see, it zooms in. Minus will zoom out. And we can also go and press control M and that will then mirror the video. On the Windows side, I don't believe that any of those are available if you don't go and actually pay for the app. So I feel like that's how it's supposed to be set up and it's just not implemented properly on the Linux side. But I'm not complaining, I get some nice features. There are a couple of things you might want to play around with on the Android side, but really the main things are going to be messing with the white balance, which you can do from this button right here. Basically, it's going to give you a list of different ways the scene can be colored. So let's say we want it to be the daylight setting. It will then slightly modify how the colors look, or we can go set it to say, I don't know, the uh, shade setting. It looks like this, or you can just leave it on automatic and it will deal with the white balance itself. And if you are using this on Wi-Fi, you might care about some of the security settings. So there's nothing crazy in here. Really, the ones you're going to care about. So first, we have to stop the connection. Really, the ones you're going to care about is setting a username and a password. If you're not using Wi-Fi, though, you don't even really need to bother with this. I've talked about this before. My house is laid out in a terrible way where my access point is actually in my garage. So... Most of the time, the Wi-Fi is going to be usable, but if there's anyone else on the connection, it does get a bit shoddy from time to time. So I prefer to do everything with the USB connection if I can. So the way that we go and do that is actually pretty easy. Now, if you're using Android, make sure you go and select USB Android, not USB iOS. And likewise, if you're on iOS, make sure you select the iOS version. Now, I don't know why it gives you the ability to modify your port here, because the port number does not matter when you connect over USB. Now, if you've used anything like this before, you can probably work out that you need to go and enable USB debugging. So the way that we go and do that isn't really that complex. What we do is go into our phone settings, and usually it'll be in a section called something like About Phone. What you need to do is go and find your phone's build number. So in my case, it's under About Phone, and then under Version, and basically go and tap on this five times. In my case, I've already got it set to Developer Mode, but Tapping it five times should give you a prompt to enable it. So once you've gone and done that, then you can actually go and enable things like USB debugging. So if we go to that one, USB debug, and then make sure that this one is actually set to on. The other thing you need to do is when you actually connect your phone, it'll give you a prompt for how you actually want to transfer files. So in this case, make sure it's set to transfer files, not charge only or whatever it's called in the case of your phone. In some phones, you do need to have it on transfer photos instead. So just play around with it and see which one actually works. Now, a good indication for whether it's going to work is going into your terminal and running the command ADB devices and if your device actually shows up in this list then it's available to actually connect to and then after that the connection process is basically no different from what we did over on the original one so all we do is go back to the app and then go make sure we're on usb android click connect and then it will go and connect straight away so if you were having problems before then this should be much much smoother now, the nice thing about this method is it actually gives you access to the camera as a regular camera device. So you can go and put it in something like, say, OBS or Zoom or Jitsi or Discord, really anything that will accept a regular webcam. Now, if for whatever reason you just need a video stream, but you don't need it to be a video device, you can also go and connect directly to it instead. So if we just go and end this connection here, so stop that. As we'll see, it shows us a browser IP cam access. So we can go to that IP directly. And what that's going to do is basically show us exactly what we saw before. But this time, it's just in our web browser. So we can go on, you know, focus on stuff. We can go on Zoom. Basically, everything we saw before. We even have access to controls that we can control it from the client side as well. So we can go and zoom in from here. We can go and enable the flash. We can enable autofocus. Basically, everything we were doing before. Now... I don't really know when you would ever want to use this because this is just a video feed, not a video device. So I guess if you were, say, testing an AR application and you just wanted to have the video feed or maybe you were using a bunch of phones as a way to do video surveillance, but even then you'd want to have a video device. I'm not sure when you'd ever want to have a video feed like this. But if you just need the video feed and you don't actually need any of the controls, I'll just go and end the connection here so we can actually go and connect to that. We can go to the slash video link as well. So this one will actually just show the video feed without anything on it. This one, once again, I don't really know why you'd ever want to use this, but it is here if you do need to use it. 
Now, there is a slight issue with getting this working, at least on Arch Linux. So when you try to install it, it's going to complain that it's missing some kernel modules. And the reason why it's missing that is because it actually has a dependency that it doesn't list as a dependency. So if you don't have Linux headers installed, basically it's not going to work. So the way we go and install that is just sudo pacman-s linux-headers. And then that will actually go and install that package. Now, I don't know why this isn't listed as a dependency, but if you don't install it, it just won't work. Now, when you do install it, you will have to actually go and reinstall DroidCam, and I'd recommend just doing a reboot anyway, and then it should be working after that. There are ways you can just go and enable the kernel modules, but restarting is going to be easier than explaining it right now. Now, when you do any kernel updates, it may also break DroidCam. I don't know why that happens, but it's probably to do with those kernel modules again. In those cases, just reinstall and it should be working again. Now, if you do actually want to use this as a webcam, I'd also recommend going and buying something like this. So this is basically a phone holder that attaches to any standard camera mount. It actually screws out and you can resize it to pretty much any sort of phone size. Also, I'd recommend getting some sort of stand for it as well. You don't have to get something this big. This is like a, a floor stand. You can get ones that fit on your desk as well. The phone holder, I think, is like $5, maybe. That's 5 Australian. And then any sort of cheapo stand for it, you can get ones off of eBay for like 5 or $6. It'll be better than having to hold the camera the entire time you're trying to use it. So I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to say. Honestly, if you want to have a webcam and you don't want to go and fork out like $90 to $100 right now, this is honestly a way, way better solution. And if you just want to say start making videos or something, since you already have a camera here, you might as well go use that before you actually go and spend any money on anything else. So I think that's pretty much everything for me. Before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to... Uh, Joachim, Chris, Donald, Kabinian, Andrew, Nathan, Monster, Will, Chikabento, Joseph, Mitchell, Peter D, Tony, Tushar, and all of my $2 supporters. If you want to go and support my work, links down below to my Patreon, subscribe, sell, leave, pay, all of that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere. And then this channel is available on Library, Odyssey, and BitChute if you want to watch on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.